Hello, today I'm going to make some barbed wire. I was having a look at a bit the other day and I was like, I was interested in, in its design and how it's put together because it's basically just a twist and then another piece which goes in and is wrapped around. And so I thought, why not have a go at making some? You know, I've got numerous scars on my hands from climbing over barbed wire as a kid and then ripping your hands across it, getting lovely cuts all over my hands. And so I figured today, I want to try and make some. I was interested by it, by its design. Let's have a go. These two bars are going to be the main body of the bit of barbed wire. So we're only doing a small section. I'll probably have room for two barbs. It's four mil, so it's going to be a bit beefy. But this was about as thin as I was thin as I was willing to go. As I think any any smaller, I'd have to forge the stock myself, and then it just gets a bit fiddly. So it'll be a bit bit beefy. You wouldn't want to spike yourself on it, but it's just a fun experiment. So, I've normalised them as well, that's the other thing. So they're a bit softer and I know the properties so I can get a nice even cold twist. I don't need any heat. I'm going to put them in the vise and then I'll do, I think, just a loose, bit of a loose twist on it, which we're then going to have to open out to get the barbs in because the barbs are effectively just like woven in they're not welded they're just put through and then wrapped around so let's see if we can do this making sure as well to pull out on it so it stays twist stays nice and straight and I'm checking it because it's in this horizontal position so I can see how even we're going and how how far I want to take it. I mean that that's probably about as tight as it needs to go really, I think. But I am going to have to heat it up to open a couple of these twists out so I can then get a bar in, if you know what I mean, for the barbs. There's that piece I've just made up. I'm going to use some wire and wrap it around to get a very rough estimate for how much material I need to take for each of the barbs. Now, I was having a look outside at some barbed wire and the barbs have four points on. And so to get those four points, they were actually made of two pieces of steel. So I'll need, if I'm doing two of two separate barbs, I'll need four pieces of steel and each one is roughly wrapped around three times. So, let's take a very rough estimate of how much material I need to take. So that's one, two, and then three. About there. So, I'll go and measure that now, see how long that is. So that's five inches. So I'll probably cut them at about four and a half to allow for a little bit of stretch on the tapers on each side. Here's the little piece of barbed wire and looking at these, the points of the barbs, they, they look as if they have a small square taper on. So that's what I'm gonna do on the pieces that I've cut out there four and a half inches, so hopefully we can spread them with these little square tapers to five inches. I'll flip it over, point the other end. Got the pieces for the barbs all done. I've got to somehow work out how to weave these into here. So looking at that piece of barbed wire, they go through a gap and then they wrap around. And so one goes through this way and then the other goes through that way and then they wrap around in the same direction and then you end up with a point going that way and a point going that way on the other side. At least that's what I think looking at that other piece. So I need to open up a gap in this twist. To do that, I'm gonna get a very short heat and then 
upset it and hopefully that will just open it out a little bit so we can get the two pieces through. I've got quite a short heat on it and hopefully this is no. Right. Might have to do this a different way because that was just opening the end twist out. I'll have to have a think. I think maybe we can get on there with some tongs. Maybe. I ended up using tongs to open this twist out because I found it was a bit easier. That upset was just splaying the ends rather than actually moving the material where we wanted it to move. So I had to open it out. I'll show you in a minute. I had to open it out and then bring the ends back together. So the twist is a bit off now. I'm hoping that after we've put these two pieces through, one going that way, one going that way, I can then twist it closed again to really nip these in there so they're not going to move, but also even the twist out again. We'll see what happens. I've got to do the same to this side anyway, so I'll show you how I opened it up. So I sort of have to untwist it, open that gap out, and bring these ends back in, and then retwist them on the very end, just so they hold together. And I'm hoping that I can then twist that back closed once we've got these pieces in there, but we'll see. I've had a go at putting the barb on this end. This twist either side ended up much tighter than I thought it was going to, but that barb is, you know, that's not moving anywhere, so that's really good. This could be a bit more even, but on the whole, pretty good. I'm gonna try and show you what I did on this side. So on the little pieces, I put a little, just a, a pre-bend in it so that they're ready to go in. I'm, I haven't really worked out a good system to do this. It's quite tricky. It took me quite a few heats. I'll try and show you how I've done it, but basically they start off like, like that. So there's one pointing up and one pointing down, and then they twist in the same direction, if I'm making sense. Hopefully I am. I'll try and show you. gone wrong already that needs to be barb wants to stick out like that there we go i just had them on the wrong way around hopefully this is gonna work and also i want to leave a bit of a gap in there for the other bar to go through and then wrap that around as well they sort of intertwine in the twist around this bar I'll heat the other one up and try and get that through that hole now. Very fiddly and very messy at the moment, but hopefully once you get it sort of going, it, it gets a bit easier as the steel just sort of, you know, they, they overlap, they, well not overlap, but they sort of, they work work themselves, they do the work themselves as you begin to get it begin to get it to go around. I'm not really making any sense, but I'll heat the entire thing up now. Try and get it tighter.
that one came out much better than the other one and I'll just twist the end so it's all all even twists along the bar. I enjoyed making this little section of barbed wire. The reason why I did this was because I was interested in its design and how it actually puts together because it's pretty simple really it's just a twist which has a bit of an opening in which a bar is thread through well two bars go through and then they just wrap around and that's it and it you, you know those two barbs that I put on there they're really tight they're not moving at all so I was really happy with how it turned out and it's interesting you know to see these different sort of mechanical fixings almost this is very similar to something that I've seen uh, Stephen Lund do and he does this on his seaweed sculptures and so he'll have sort of branches I don't know that's not really what the right word to call them but steel bars twisted together which he then opens up and like threads through a leaf or or whatever it is he's going to put on it and then closes the twist up again and so you know it's sort of the same principle in doing a bit of barbed wire as making one of those seaweed sculptures which is really cool and maybe one day I'll, I'll make one of those in a video as well but as I said those are Stephen Lund's design he's a great smith in the north, north of England I'm a big fan of his work he does very natural flowing designs which are really, really cool anyway I enjoyed making this little bit of barbed wire I'll see you soon